the official trailer for the Bears third season just came out and it's kind of a unique situation because we know it's the next to last season. Because each one is a relatively short binge and they've avoided the prestige era long pause between seasons, the show still feels new even though it's halfway over. We also know that they filmed seasons 3 and 4 back to back, so in a little over a year the series will reach its conclusion. I'm not bringing this up to complain. The show's intensity means the shorter runtime seems sensible. And while we are flying through the story, they haven't been sacrificing any character development. It's more about knowing where season 3 lands in the overall structure of the story and what that means for what we should expect to happen this time around. Essentially, this is the setup for the ending. If one thing jumps out from the trailer immediately, it's the list of the non-negotiables, which we'll get into in more detail. But this is particularly interesting for me because I finished working on a season 1 deep dive two days ago, and have just started on season 2. Of course, I rewatched them both before I started, but I'm just getting into breaking down the early episodes of the second season, so the questions, problems, and promises of season 1 are still fresh in my mind. One of the best parts of that is Mikey giving his younger brother a choice at the end of the first season. We saw what he did with that and how he ended up stuck locked in the walk-in while everyone else came together to make it through friends and family. It left Carmi at a potential turning point and the trailer seems to indicate he'll be doubling down on the more toxic aspects of his gift. While the first season made a pretty good case that he'd be better off cutting those things out of his life if he ever wants to heal. This is what's so compelling about his character, and the general setup of things. And when he says this is how restaurants at the highest level operate, it's something he knows firsthand. He's experienced success, and even if it almost killed him, you could see him choosing that continual pain over what he experienced in last season's finale. The thing is, he's earnestly expressed that he needs Sydney to make this happen, and her stated purpose is to create something that's better than what they've experienced coming up in fine dining. She delivers the best line in the trailer when he says he can sense the sarcasm, and she replies, No, 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 not sarcasm. Snark. Contempt, even. If you didn't pause and zoom in, the full list of non-negotiables reads, Of the place... Less is more, vibrant collaboration, no repeat ingredients, consolidation and speed, confidence and competence, in and out service, pursuit of excellence, details matter, know your shit, focus. And on the second page, you can see a few of them that say clean as you go, shirts perfectly pressed, no surprises. And most of that sounds reasonable, if not empty at the same time. The one that gets me is vibrant collaboration, which Richie thinks is demented. And I don't know, if it's a mandated non-negotiable, could collaboration be vibrant? It makes me think about his monologue from the season one finale, how he talked about seeing any new chefs that came into stage as competition, and how he wanted to smoke them. This all could be coming from a good place, but we've spent enough time with these characters by now to know this probably won't go over well. In that vein, we know one of Sydney's motivations was to get a star, but when Karma uses that as the explanation for why he's going to extremes and puts it on her saying this is what you wanted, right? I feel like we can answer for her. Yeah, but not like that. She wanted a couple of things and she might prioritize them differently. And who knows, maybe he's right. Maybe that's what it takes, but if that's the case, then you can change your mind. And that's why I found the biggest shocker of a scene in the trailer to be the quick shot of Sid shaking hands with the chef from Chef Terry's restaurant where Richie found his purpose in Forks. This could obviously be anything, but one of those things is that she might be leaving the bear behind for the greatest restaurant in the world. And that kind of goes back to what I was saying about this being the penultimate season. When I heard there were four, I thought it might make sense to focus pretty heavily on Sydney in this season. She's the other major character here, and it feels like the fourth season should have some resolution for Carmi and his story. Sort of how Richie's big turning point was intertwined with the climax of last season. 
Richie's story isn't over, but his big arc of being the point of friction based on his unwillingness to let go of the beef's past because he fears there's no place for him in the bear's future is. And if we think of the show primarily as Carmi's story, then the question is how Sydney, who don't get me wrong is a dynamic character and compelling regardless of how her presence affects Carmen. The question is how does she fit into his ending? Apparently, some people on the internet were hoping they'd start a relationship, which doesn't really work for me. There were two main things I thought worked for the character when she was introduced. She didn't know Mikey and was disconnected from the beef's history, which made her a potential ally for Carm when the rest of the staff was resistant to the changes he was making. And she respected him and understood what he went through to get the accolades he's achieved. This is all on top of the basic stuff like her talent and ability to present ideas in an actionable manner. Because she came from the fine dining world, she's likely more attuned to the red flags that the original staff might interpret differently. One of the tensest moments in the trailer is when Sweep spills the glass of wine because you're just like, no, don't let him be the sacrificial lamb if somebody has to go down during Carmi's reign of terror. Gary has just been consistently likable and a team player from day one. You'd really hate to see him lose his spot. All of them, really. Some of the quick shots of Tina are my favorites in the trailer because you just like that she's there. But yeah, as far as Sydney's concerned, it would certainly be a loss for Carmi if he drove her away. And while I know I said that he might be right and maybe he has to be that intense to achieve his goals, Chef Terry and her restaurant that has three stars and is considered the best in the world in the Bears universe didn't seem to have much of that going on at all. We only spent an episode there, but I think we saw enough and the prime example is the idea of someone taking responsibility for the smudge. That whole thing only seemed to be necessary to make the point that it's tremendously difficult to operate on that level and requires a commitment to personal responsibility. But how they were discussing it was different than calling someone up to be punished. Is that the same as what Carmi's trying to do with his non-negotiables? If Sid leaves, it would be a big loss for the restaurant. And if she's given the opportunity to work for Chef Terry and decides to stay, then there would be a nice parallel to Carm having the choice to walk away and deciding not to, instead trying to create something out of the ashes of his brother's death. So either of these could work to supply some tasty drama. And speaking of Mikey, it was nice to get a shot of John Barenthal in what looks like a flashback to when they were first discussing opening a restaurant together. This is one of those cases where just bring on the flashbacks. Anything we can find out about Carmi and his family and everything that happened before this is welcome. I guess the other thing that might have jumped out at you as a big surprise was Claire's return if you're one of those people who thought she might not. I guess you can tell I wasn't by the way I phrased that. But of course she's back. I was a little surprised at the mixed reaction to the character, and I'll be looking at this closely when I go back through, but I liked her. Initially, I liked that she knew Carmi before and understood his family situation. And also the way crushes at that age are just different than anything that happens in the rest of your life. She knew him and had feelings, but also had her own stuff going on, which meant she didn't need him or need to get caught up in the chaos that surrounds him. There's a sense that she wants to understand him more than anything else. And considering we see Fack reaching out to her and Uncle Jimmy asking Carm what happened, it doesn't look like she's trying to swoop in to save the day. The main takeaway at the end of season two isn't that he's an idiot who just needs a good woman at home to be all right. The point is that he's so messed up he can't handle a relationship. You'd hope he'd see that as something worth working towards because she's someone who fell for him before any of this other stuff happened and she's not completely put off by it. But his answer to Uncle Jimmy that he told her he couldn't waste his time is not very promising. And here's the thing. You can get philosophical about what he needs or the restaurant needs, but Jimmy's presence here is a reminder that there are real world considerations that don't care about his mental health or love life at all. They made a deal for the extra money in season two and they only have 18 months to make good on it. Based on some of the shots in the trailer and Jimmy just coming out and saying where's the money indicates that it won't go well. And you can see how Karm might use that to deflect from his problems and how it could work as an excuse. Another thing that pops up here is Carmen presenting a partnership agreement to Sid. This is something that seemed like an oversight and something she justifiably started to worry about after she went out to talk to different chefs when she was looking for menu inspiration alone after Carm blew her off to hang out with Claire. 
This is where I wonder if the tone of the trailer is trying to mislead us. I mean, it's a trailer, so you should never put too much stock in it. But the way it's laid out makes you almost suspicious of everything Carmi's doing. When he's telling her that the agreement is so that she can push him and he can push her, it sounds like a setup so he can push her more. And they follow that up with her talking to Pete, looking uncertain about the whole thing. Which I should mention was kind of a fun surprise to see those two characters having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But yeah, the trailer is leaning into Carmi crashing and burning, which is a definite potential outcome of this season. So we'll have to wait and see if that's really how things play out. There's a ton of other stuff mixed in there. Some subtle reminders that we're watching a comedy. And maybe nothing as funny as the password being go fast boats mojito one word. But the fact stuff looks ripe with the quick shot of him with his brother and the one where he continues to pour the water long after it's overflowing. And Richie overriding Carmen's authority for the pinata presentation looks like the makings of something memorable. There's also the debate over the bowls, which you can see are different. But I love watching Richie make the case that it's just variation due to them being handmade earthenware. The food looks incredible, so at least they got that. But in the quick cuts, we see plates falling, plates getting dumped in the trash because they're not perfect, and plates getting thrown against walls. Plus, the looks on everyone's faces seem to be sour in a way that goes beyond just working at an incredibly stressful job. There's only a brief shot of Ibrahim where we see him opening a bag in the most aggressive way possible after we hear Carmi saying, you're going too slow. So you probably don't need to worry about the show losing any of its trademark tension. It does have other gears though, and we've got a pregnant sugar in a wholesome shot with Pete, one of Richie and his daughter in her bedroom, and one of Tina looking all pumped up over produce at the market. The one area where I couldn't tell where it was heading was with Marcus. A lot of the brief shots he's in are quiet in comparison to everything else. We do see that he's upping his game, which is expected, and we hear him say this is what's up now, and I don't know, he doesn't look the same. It's possible his mother died, or maybe it just has to do with work, and I suppose it doesn't matter. What matters is we're invested, and I can't wait to see what happens. We know there will be 10 episodes, and that they'll all drop at the same time on June 27th, so we got a lot to look forward to, and I think that's a great place to leave things. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do have a Season 2 recap coming, but that's probably still another week out. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.